不是他哥了。It's your girl Jay, and today I'm here with my thriller recommendations part three. I do one of these every single October. I know that it's November now, we're a little bit behind, but I will leave the links to the first two parts down below if you want to check those out because obviously I'm not going to talk about books that I talked about in those videos in this one. So I chose five books to talk about this time around, so without further ado, let us get started. The first book that I have is The Female of the Species by Minnie McGinnis, and this is a very popular book. So many people are a huge fan of this, myself included. I gave it a 4.5 out of 5 stars. The only reason I bumped it down from a 5 out of 5 stars is because the ending ruined me, and I'm still not over it, like two years later after I read it. I have a full review of this if you're interested to see my full thoughts on it, but I think that this is a great thriller book. It follows Alex Craft, who feels a lot of emotion, sometimes a little bit too strongly, so when the opportunity to get revenge on her sister's murderer arises, she decides to take that chance. She ends up meeting somebody named PK, who is the preacher's daughter, and they become friends. She then meets a boy named Jack, who is your typical jock, and he needs a scholarship in order to go to university. As their three lives become intertwined, they navigate high school together, and it's like the story of that. This book has been described as The Savage Song meets Dexter, which are two of my favorite things. Definitely think that that is a very true comparison. I just highly recommend this book. There are a lot of trigger warnings for rape, sexual assault, drug and alcohol use, and animal cruelty in it, so definitely just be aware of that going in, but highly recommend this one. The next book that I have is Pretty Baby by Mary Kubica. I honestly could recommend all of Mary Kubica's books for thriller recommendations. I am personally a big fan of them. I think I gave this one a 4 out of 5 stars. The book follows a woman named Heidi Wood who can't help but notice the girl and her baby standing outside the train station. So without consulting her husband, Heidi decides to take Willow and her baby home and as secrets from Willow's past come to light, she realizes that her family might be in danger. This book is definitely a more slow burn thriller book. It takes a lot of time to get into the story, but the pacing in my opinion was really well done because everything is revealed very slowly which makes it even more creepy I thought I was a huge fan of it it's also told in three points of views Heidi's Heidi's husband and like flashbacks to Willow's backstory which I just think brought the whole story together so this is another one that I definitely recommend if you're the next it. book that I'm going to recommend is definitely more on the darker thriller side so definitely be aware of that going in it is the good daughter by Karen Slaughter this book takes place in 1989 when Charlie and Sam's life changed forever when their mother was murdered because their father is a lawyer for criminals that most people would not want to represent. Now, 28 years later, another crime was committed involving a young girl named Kelly. Charlie is the first witness on the scene and she quickly realizes that there are parallels to her past with this case and she starts getting flashbacks of that she would rather not remember. Like I said before, this book is very dark, it's very, very, very graphic, but it is such a roller coaster. Like, I was turning the pages nonstop. I needed to finish it. It was so addictive, and I definitely recommend it if you can handle darker thrillers. This book honestly made Karen Slaughter an autobi author for me. I pick up any book that she writes now because this one was just so freaking good. I think I gave it a 4.5 out of 5 stars. The next book I have is Lying in Wait by Liz Nugget. I gave this book a 5 out of 5 stars. I loved it so much more than I thought I would. I was not expecting to fall in love with this book. The book follows Lydia, who is living the perfect life. She is the wife to a very successful lawyer. Her son, Lawrence, is the light of her life, and she's also living in a very big mansion. When Lawrence uncovers a secret that Lydia and her husband have been hiding since the day they met Annie, everything changes. And it is just, like, such a roller coaster. Like, right from the first line, I was instantly hooked on this book. Like, I'll read you the tagline says, my husband did not mean to kill Annie Doyle, but the lying tramp deserved it. Like, if that doesn't make you want to read this book, I don't know what will, because it is, like, 
so freaking good. This is another one that is told in alternating perspective. So you get Lydia, Karen, who is Annie's sister, as well as Lawrence, and it is just so well done. Clearly, I just really like alternating perspective books. They each told the same story, but from different sides, and it was just so well done. And also, this ending literally left me with my mouth hanging open. That's how good it is. So, highly, highly recommend you check out this one if you're into thrillers, because this is a thriller recommendation video. And then the last book that I have for this round of my thriller recommendations is Lie to Me by J.T. Ellison, and this I also have a full review up if you want to hear full thoughts on it. But I give this a 4.5 out of 5 stars. This one follows writers Sutton and Ethan Montclair, who seem to be the perfect couple. But then Sutton goes missing and Ethan becomes the main suspect. This is another one where you get multiple perspectives. It's also told in three different sections, which I thought was very unique. I've never seen a book do that before. But you get a perspective from Sutton, Ethan, Holly, who is the detective on the case, and then you get an unknown voice, which I thought brought the whole story together so well. Like, I was so invested in the story just because I wanted to know who the unknown voice was. It was definitely a he said, she said narrative, and I just really enjoyed it. I loved trying to figure out who was actually telling the truth. Sutton and Ethan are also very unlikable narrators, and I personally am a huge fan of unreliable narrators, so I definitely enjoyed that part of the book as well. The first section of the book is Ethan's voice only, the second part is Sutton's voice only, and then the third part is like a mixture of all four of the voices. It was honestly just like chef's kiss, so well done. I am so into this book, highly recommend it. Again, if you're into thrillers, duh. All right, everybody, that was my thriller recommendations part three. Let me know down below if you've read any of these, what you thought of them. Also, if you want, recommend me some thrillers because I'm always here for more thrillers on my shelves. I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye.